My name is Harrison Bond. On behalf of WDPD and my project team, we are pleased to present you today with our uh, project proposal for Q University's Mixed Use Campus Housing Project. Uh, we'll be going over a few topics. Uh, start with key personnel, go to prior experience of related projects, move on to the project uh, management approach, the design and technical approach, project schedule, and proposal price. So key personnel, my name is Harrison Baum, like I said before, I'm the project executive. To my left is Jonathan Barroso, project manager. To his left is Arun Tuya, our lead architect. To his left is William Tui, our project architect, followed by Matthew McKinnon, our superintendent, and James Thomas, our pre-construction manager. Uh, so prior experience job, uh, one job I'd like to bring up is the Framingham State University North Hall. It had a project budget of $72 million and it just had under uh, 500 beds. With this project, we uh, actually utilized a lot of BIM 3D modeling with our MEP subcontractors to kind of see what roadblocks we could find before we got in the field and uh, lower RFIs and change orders. The next project is the Boston College O'Brien Dorm. It's a two building, one phase project with a budget of $62 million. Uh, this project had a few issues with getting caught in the middle of the dreadful Boston winter of 2015. A lot of snow delays, it pushed the project schedule back by three weeks. But as a team, we came together and uh, used a lot of lean techniques, uh, a lot of pole planning to deliver the project at the scheduled date. The last project I'd like to bring up is the Greenway Residence Halls at Amherst College with a project budget of $85 million. It is a four-building, two-phase project that actually, uh, with the IPD approach, we brought in the structural steel subcontractor and MEP subcontractor to coordinate and collaborate with the uh, design and constructability of the project. This project also had uh, zero on-job uh, on site injuries. I just want to take a minute and talk about our IPD approach. Um, our IPD, IPD team, we uh, chose to team up with a uh, mechanical contractor, T.G. Gallagher, an <coughs> electrical contractor, MCOR, and a structural steel contractor, high steel. Uh, we thought with the size of these uh, bid packages that they were the uh, most beneficial in terms of uh, coordination, procurement, long lead items to bring them on board uh, early rather than later to meet this uh, aggressive schedule. Uh, so benefits, as I stated, uh, stated with design assist, putting their uh, expertise and knowledge in uh, helping along with the design, uh, with our design team working uh, hand in hand and uh, taking on an aggressive procurement, uh, releasing early bid packages to start the work before 100% uh, uh, CPs. Uh, so the advantage is having these prime contractors having their own uh, subs with, uh, within the same uh, related scope, for example, mechanical contractor, having their own sub of this sheet metal, um, work them working together, um, it's certainly beneficial. Um, we, don't, we do not uh, work with sub, team up with uh, prime sub, subcontractors that we have worked with in the past. We think it's important that we have a good working relationship with that company in, uh, and their project uh, management teams, because um, it is a team effort with the IPD, and uh, the strong relationship is uh, beneficial. Um, we'll be using a BIM 360 glue throughout the whole project. Um, we won't have traditional um, drawings on site. We'll be working off of a live model, building off the of live model throughout, throughout the entire project. Um, solving issues on site with the design team there, with all the prime contractors there, being able to walk over to a certain issue and and, uh, and, um, and handle it right there without uh, having to wait to issue any ASI bulletin or sketches, um, expedites that process, uh, eliminating all RFIs, um, this increased full collaboration aspect of this IPD. Um, project management uh, software that we're using is Procore, uh, controlling all construction documents. Uh, handling submittal is a great tool for punch list. Um, that's, uh, all owners are a big fan of this tool. It's uh, very user friendly and uh, easy. Uh, goes along with all the collaboration aspects of the IPD. All right. Thank you. Uh, so I want to talk about some of the architectural aspects of the tragic involved here. Uh, basic uh, 
construction area uh, site, it has four buildings, three of them being residential dorms, and uh, this, the fourth one being a dining home. Uh, the overall uh, orientation was the prime uh, uh, four certain design using uh, daylighting and uh, using some techniques to create a better environment within and outside. Uh, so, this is kind of the overall mass. And what you can see, building A is the dining hall, which we located in the center of the campus, created a new student hub <coughs> for the said campus. Uh, building B is actually one of the largest uh, dormitories due to the phase one requirement of having too many beds. So, this has actually 205 beds. Uh, and uh, fulfilling that uh, phase one requirement. And building C and building D are both uh, residential dorms with uh, excluding uh, building D's first floor having large amount of academic spaces, uh, classrooms, and uh, bike storage for the students. Uh, this is kind of an example of what we envision that call to have using daylighting and some techniques to create a better environment within for the students and uh, anywhere else. And for the exterior, using kind of permeable pathways uh, to allow uh, water to travel out of campus and creating uh, green spaces where we see it. You know, just talk a little bit more um, deeper about the design square footage. Um, so we did four buildings. Uh, building A, that, uh, and that dining hall is 31,500 square feet, um, with an opportunity to expand uh, on basically any facade, um, favoring everything but the north. But it, could be possible. Uh, building B, 205 beds plus the additional 7260 for res life housing management, some support spaces. So you have offices and uh, collaborative spaces, laundry, mail rooms, etc. cetera. That's another first floor. Um, building C and D have the remaining 308 beds. So we come in at 513, three more than what was asked, um, and uh, GSF of uh, 211,500 square feet. Uh, the whole site. This is the first floor and only floor of the dining hall. Accommodates 400, 500 people. Um, and then we have this kind of get it and go type of dining um, towards the center to the left part of the plan. Uh, first building, building uh, B of the residential. You can see the bottom part, <coughs> it doesn't have any beds, uh, is actually for um, some of that res life and some of that um, office space um, that we allocated around this program. Um, and then you see this opening as you go up uh, floor two through four, you start to get that light well. Um, that allows daylight to penetrate through the structure and get into those bedrooms um, on the inside. So we're not making these dark, scary uh, bedrooms for these students, <laughs> and it's not illegal. So on the next building, uh, building C, it's part of phase two. Um, so we have now gone over uh, the 200 bed requirement. Um, so now we're trying to fulfill um, the remaining 308 beds that we have. Um, so this is pretty much the same four floors. Last building we have um, is you see those columns uh, um, over on the side. That's a kind of covered bike area uh, kind of facility um, where kids can come in, park their bikes, um, spend time, hide from the weather, um, or what have you. And this is continued residential above that. Um, some important uh, lead points to touch on. Uh, we really focused on indoor air quality uh, as a strategy. Daylighting is obviously important, giving the user of the room the ability to um, create cross ventilation throughout the, the building is important. Um, we need them to be able to operate the window to control their own environment. Um, it's very important, both controls in the user's hands. Um, things like water use reduction, open space, obviously, we're taking away this huge parking lot, putting buildings in lots of green space, and even part of the hardscape is a permeable surface. Um, so we're not just throwing down um, concrete or, or something harsh. Um, green design strategies, indoor and in the envelope. Uh, Thoughts of using low consumption toilets, uh, flushing controls, giving that user the power, again, to make the decisions and understand how they're affecting their environment. Um, low VOC paints, coatings, etc. cetera. Um, VCT from recycled materials, even um, throughout the dorms as uh, flooring, and a very efficient building envelope uh, with insulated metal panel uh, and triple paned uh, argon filled low E glass uh, to really make this a tight envelope. Uh, green design strategies outdoors. Obviously, we have those bikes, like I mentioned, um, something called Big Belly Solar Compactors. Um, this, from our understanding, can uh, save 10 to 12 trips of taking out the trash. It actually compacts the trash right down um, based off the photovoltaics on the trash and that powers uh, the compactor. So if we sprinkle these across campus, um, it's actually going to be beneficial for the students, and they're going to see what they're doing, how they're affecting their community by seeing this little bit engage um, with the environment and permeable uh, pavement, walkways, bike paths, like I mentioned. HVAC considerations, 
Uh, again, we want to stress the, the fact that we put the uh, ability in the user's hands uh, to create cross ventilation in their rooms um, during appropriate times of year, obviously. Um, but there has to be mechanical ventilation, obviously. Um, and all air system for heating and cooling with the necessary uh, ductwork, and et cetera, throughout the building. Um, and to meet that requirement for built in trash recycling uh, around every floor of every building we're maintaining um, that area uh, for floor. Wentworth Design Build will deliver you an efficient schedule that meets all your deadlines. As you can see here, we have our big milestones for this project with the start of construction starting on January 5th, 2017, completing on January 22nd of 2000, that same year. Four months prior to that, when phase one is weather tight, we'll be beginning phase two construction on dorm C and D. And that part of the project, phase two, will be completed on December 12th, 2018. To narrow our schedule down, we like to use pull planning sessions. It's a collaborative effort between all the subcontractors and WDB, where we can set uh, date deliverables, promise and guarantee them to each trade to help accelerate our schedule and create more efficient scheduling techniques. This works great with an IPD approach. We use touch plan software to keep track of all this. Our site logistics. Our goal is to ensure no student or faculty at Hewitt University is impaired from their day-to-day -day activities. Because it's an occupied campus, we have to take precautionary measures to make sure everyone is safe on campus. So for example, we'll have a noise uh, mitigation plan. We will not be starting any vehicles, trucks, or machinery before 7 a.m. on our job site. Our working hours will be 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. This way it eliminates all noise outside of working construction hours. Also, our earthwork contract will be responsible for dust mitigation on site during the <coughs> summer months when dust picks up and kick around campus, affecting students and faculty passing by. To stop this, sprinklers keep the dirt wet. As we move into site phasing here and start phase two, as you can tell, our laydown area becomes smaller. With a small laydown area, we've implemented a four-day four day laydown grace period, which means when material is delivered on site within four days, it must be constructed into the building. This prevents wasteful use of space and allows for trucks, machinery, more materials to move on and off site. And also because all our buildings are four floors or under. We're able to use mobile cranes, which can officially maneuver around site for steel erection. And also we can preload floors with things such as drywall and materials with uh, extended uh, forklift. Safety, our goal is to provide a safe and healthy work environment for all those on our job site and surrounding our job site. We have EMR score of 0.82, which is well above what the industry standard is. As you can tell over the past three years, our EMR score has improved. Using a predictive analytics software, we're able to track and predict future risks associated with our job sites and help create efficient schedules so we don't get delayed by injuries. So in regards to the price, uh, my pre-construction services team and I have been able to work with the budget that was provided to us and actually try to maximize that budget as well. Uh, so we were able to come up with a GMP of $78,365,813, um, which as you can see is toward that higher end of the budget, uh, trying to get the most out of the money that you uh, have to spend. Um, within that budget is a design fee, um, which is just there for all the incurred costs of designing and engineering the project. And the contingency is there, um, since this is a conceptual design, for any work packages that are not completely designed yet. And along with the GMP, we've also provided multiple options for value engineering, uh, strictly just to reduce the cost of the project. Uh, Gateway decides to do so. Uh, it's not changing any scope or any of the project requirements that were asked of us. Um, and a pretty good example of that is this picture we have here is a rendering of the facade of the building, which is mostly uh, made up of metal wall panels. So if you decided to use vinyl uh, or a different, you know, cheaper product, you can see some of those cost savings. Or you know, with the you know, flooring, instead of using ceramic tile on the bathrooms, you can use VCT, and that's another way to uh, save costs throughout the building. On behalf of WDB and our project team, uh, we'd like to thank you for your time and uh, your review of our project proposal. Thank you. All right.
Edward, uh, I had a question about this graphic. Um, as the owner of Kiwid, am I expected to coordinate the mechanical, electrical, and steel contractor? Or do they work for WDB? Yes. There's uh, under contract with you. With them? Yes. Okay, so we, we uh, enter into contract with uh, WDB and these three main contractors. Okay. Right. Okay. Sure. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, all right, you said the square footage is one square and 11,000 square feet, that's inclusive of all the structures that you went through, right, for all days. Okay. Tell me a little bit about your approach to the use of the contingency. Again, you said that that was uh, to be used for uh, basically scope uh, or design fruition, you know, design uh, <coughs> completion. Correct. So since this is a conceptual design, not all of the work packages are completely designed yet. Okay. Um, so the GMP uh, has that contingency in there for that potential uh, progressing design that could either add cost to it. Okay. Where does that money go? Should, should uh, you not need to use it? So if we're able to deliver the project below the GMP, uh, that contingency can actually be split between KeyWit and TV um, as like a cost reimburse. What's the split? Uh, that can be decided later on uh, between uh, DB and Kiwit. About 100 zero. <laughs> Come on, see. <laughs> <I'll follow. coughs> so that's a follow up a little bit more of what, what Keith was asking. What, walk me through this here. So, what's, what's going on here? So, this is the uh, integrated project delivery method. Okay. So, um, the prime contractors sign, are going to be signing with you uh, to, uh, they're kind of held more responsible uh, from a financial from a financial perspective. Um, and uh, the team, as a CM, we're going to be in charge of the schedule and managing um, certain logistics and from that standpoint. But in, in terms of coordination with, with the subcontractors, uh, that, that, that'll be us, but just from the financial perspective, they'll be under contract with the owner. Do you guys self perform the bulk of the rest of the work, or do you still have additional subcontracts that would be uh, managed by? Uh, we, we do self perform. We have laborers and carpenters, but uh, we will definitely be subcontracting out work as well. So I'm so confused. So we're, we're going to be contract, Kiwit will be contracting with you, okay. right? You'll be managing all of these subcontractors, but we'll have a, a direct contract with them. Yes. Why wasn't we? Why wouldn't we just contract with you and have you guys subcontract these remaining entities? Uh, that would be. That would not be an IPD delivery method. Would, would be. What's, what's the benefit to Kiwi? So with the IPD approach and having all of you know, the three subs that we picked and with, D, uh, with DB and Kiwit all together in one contract, um, it sort of makes that risk split between all parties. So we're all uh, working toward the same goal and we're all trying to save that GMP essentially. We're all trying to stay below budget, stay on time um, and quality and whatnot. 